welcome to our webinar today. We are so excited to have you. Glad you've joined. My name is Ashley Wheatley and I am the Director of Relocation um, here at Worldwide Health Staff Solutions. Um, and today we're going to be taking a deeper dive into the flight booking process and the relocation process overall um, in regards to the policies and procedures to get you prepared um, so that your flight booking process is super easy and our favorite stress-free. So very excited to announce our presenters today. We have two wonderful individuals who work hard every day to make sure that your transition to the US is possible. But before I introduce them, I'd love it if you could jump onto the chat and start telling us where you're from. We'd love to learn about all the wonderful countries um, and all the wonderful people that we have uh, coming and moving here to the U.S. with us. So go ahead and jump on the chat, introduce yourself, and tell us what country you're listening in from. All right, so to be able to begin and introduce our wonderful presenters, um, I'd like to start with Molly Linehan, who is our Senior Relocation Coordinator. Um, she has been with us for over a year, and within that year, she has helped relocate over 300 families, which is an incredible achievement here at Worldwide. Um, and so I'd like to introduce her um, as one of our first presenters. Thank you so much, Ashley. Hi, everyone. My name is Molly, and I'm uh, looking forward to our webinar today. Awesome. Thank you, Molly. Um, second, I'd like to introduce Andrea Amaral, who is one of our relocation coordinators who works every day. She could be your relocation coordinator, but she works every single day helping our incredible candidates. Um, relocate here to the U.S. And um, something really unique and special about Andrea is in 2014, she actually immigrated herself from Brazil. And so she uses those insights to be able to help um, her candidates um, go through that transition phase. And she really knows and understands um, where they're coming from, which is wonderful. Um, hello, Andrea. Hello, this is Andrea. I'm very happy to be here today. Thank you, Ashley. Awesome. Thank you so much. We are so excited to be able to dive in a little bit um, deeper today. Um, so to begin, um, we'd really like to just start to talk about the process. Um, what does that look like? And so, Andrea, um, I'm going to turn over the time to you and just kind of ask you, what are the first steps in the flight booking process as part of the transition? Um, the first uh, step of the process you're going to receive from your relocation coordinator an introduction email. Uh, email. Uh, your relocation coordinator will talk a little bit about themselves. The next step will be receiving your travel request where you're going to put your all your information. Then you can schedule a call with your relocation coordinator in case you have any question about booking your flight or in, about any step of the process. Um, after scheduling a call, if you decide to schedule a call, you can discuss what your employer offers, what you can have from your employer, uh, housing, uh, temporary housing, um, anything that they offer uh, to you. Uh, if you have any special travel requests, that's the moment that you need to discuss with your relocation coordinator. After that, you're going to have access to Agencia, a website that we use to book your flight. You're going to search for your flight and send it for approval. Awesome. Thank you, Andrea. You know, putting it in order like that makes it super simple. Um, the first phase of there, once you complete one thing, you move right on to the next thing. Um, loved what you said about discussing about what your employer offers. Um, every single employer has different relocation package. So please refer to your offer letter to know what those are. Um, please talk to your case manager. Your case manager can explain what those are. Um, but when you're in the booking process, if you have any questions and you need to know what those are, your relocation coordinator is the right person to go to. Um, so thank you, Andrea. Um, Andrea, I'm going to ask you another question. So um, 
Moving along a little bit, um, what what should they expect with um, the arrival timeline? Um, what is being offered to them? Those kind of things. Um, expect to plan your arrival in the United States from three weeks to three and a half months after having your visa in hand. Um, after that, we're going to need from booking your flight to your arrival about three weeks to notify your employer. You are offered one international flight. You are offered one international flight for your current, for your current location to your facility. Anything outside of that, discuss with your relocation coordinator anything special any different situation talk with your relocation coordinator awesome thank you for that um as part of that offer you are it the flight booking needs to be booked with worldwide health staff solutions so if there, just like andrea said if there's any other additional circumstances there will be special approvals needed and you get to work with andrea or your relocation coordinator with those, our goal overall is that you have an ease transition to the United States. And um, we wanna make sure that that is possible. Um, so thank you, Andrea, that was great information. Um, any additional information when it comes to arrival timelines, again, please be working with your relocation coordinator um, and your case manager can answer some of those questions as well. Um, all right, well, kinda wanna throw Molly into this a little bit. Um, and get some of her expertise. Um, so kind of transition a little bit over to what that flight booking process looks like um, and some of the maybe the policies and regulations that we have with that. Absolutely, thank you for passing some time over here, Ashley. Um, just as Andrea said, that you know, last step at the beginning process of the relocation, you're going to get access to Agencia, um, which is a website that we use um, to book flights for everyone coming over to the United States. Um, we have set policies um, to ensure that your transition is going to be as smooth as possible to the United States. Um, some of these policies include um, arriving Monday through Friday during business hours. Um, this ensures that not only us here at Worldwide are in office and ready to help you, but also that your employer is in office and ready to help you. Um, should you have any issues or have any questions that you need answered, um, and you're not alone at your first initial step here in the United States. Um, your relocation coordinator is going to be um, staying up to date on current world trends just to determine approved layover areas. I mean, this is just to ensure that you're not coming into any issues at any of your um, layover areas, whether that be in another country or here in the United States. I um, mean, with those layovers, we want to make sure that you have enough time to get through and to make it to your connecting flight. So all layovers, um, we try to stay within at least two hours or more. Um, but once you're going through, once you are at your layover at your port of entry, um, this is where you'll be going through U.S. Customs and Immigration. We want to make sure that we have at least three hours or more just to ensure you have time to make it through U.S. Customs and Immigration and still to your connecting flight. And that way we're not missing any flights and we're not rushing to get from place to place and you have time to settle before um, jumping on your next flight to your final destination. Um, along um, when you're looking for flights in Agencia, because um, you will have access to find anything that best suits you and your relocation coordinator is happy to jump in for help if you need. Um, but take a look at the amenities included um, on the flights that you're looking at. Take a look at luggage, if there's in-flight Wi-Fi or meals. Anything that's included with your ticket is yours to use. Um, however, if there's anything not included with that ticket, um, that will be your responsibility and your expense to cover. Um, so just be looking at these things while you're searching for your flights. And if you have any questions, your relocation coordinator is more than happy to help. On Agencia, you will see flights occasionally that have a red flag on it. These red flagged itineraries are, are, are out of policy flights. So these flights will not be available to you. If for any reason when you're searching for flights and all you're seeing is red flagged itineraries, reach out to your relocation coordinator. They will be happy to look into some options for you to make sure that we get you on the best flight available. And once your flight is booked, there are no rebookings. So just make sure that as you are going through the process, you are looking for flights that are gonna match your dependents. Um, you're submitting a request for the final flight that you would like to be booked on. Um, and uh, that you know for sure that this is going to be the flight that you would like because once it is booked we will not be rebooking it um, anything to add there
Actually, I believe I, we can't hear you. I apologize. I'm so sorry. No. I was muted. Am I back on? <laughs> Um, Molly, no, thank you. That was wonderful information. Um, when it comes to uh, these these parameters, they may change and adjust with time, depending on trends that we're seeing, depending on, um, like it said here, the world trends. Um, COVID is a big factor. They, they, there's different things that can come in. Even the season um, may make flight booking um, a different process for someone who maybe came in January versus somebody coming in July. Um, Molly, you had mentioned that if, you know, if they get on and they're seeing a lot of red flags um, come through and they're not sure um, if, or they're not able to find an itinerary um, to reach out to the relocation coordinator, um, what if they're just having a hard time um, finding a flight or they're not really sure uh, what is a good flight? Can they also reach out to a relocation coordinator for those options? Absolutely. If you're unsure, you're not, you're not feeling uneasy about a flight that you think might be good, um, touch base with your relocation coordinator. They'd be happy to look at the one you're looking at, find options for you and present those to you. And we can also book flights free here on our end with your confirmation and your approval. So please don't hesitate to reach out to your relocation coordinator. They are there to help and aid you in this. As we know, this is, can be a new process for a lot of people. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's wonderful information. Um, these are all different things um, that your relocation coordinator is going to be working with you on and don't hesitate to reach out. Um, something I did forget to mention at the beginning uh, before we move on is that the end of our presentation today, we will have a question and answer session. So feel free to go in and put your questions in um, and if you do have questions outside of our presentation or outside of the Q&A, um, your relocation coordinator and your case manager are more than happy to help you answer those as well. So moving on, now that we have gone through the process of the, you know, getting your initial emails, working out your travel itinerary, getting your flight booked, now your flight is booked. Uh, what do we do next, Molly? Great question. You know, this is my favorite part of the process. Your flight has been booked. You're getting excited to come and you have a, your exact date of arrival. Um, so at this time, um, your coordinator is going to be sending over your full itinerary. So you have all the details pertaining to your flight. Um, this is the time to go ahead and book your dependence flights. As soon as your flight has been booked and ticketed and you have that full itinerary in hand, go ahead and move forward. If you haven't come in with any family or dependents, book their flights right away. This is to ensure that you're not going to um, miss out on availability to fly with them, making sure that you can sit together if at all possible. Um, we want to make sure your flights or dependence flights are dep uh, booked right away, um, because if the flight is booked up, you know, and you didn't book those dependence flights in time, they may have to travel separately from you. And we want to make sure that you guys can come together if at all possible. This is also your time to start discussing housing options and securing accordingly. Your relocation coordinator is more than happy to go over um, what your employer offers in terms of housing. Um, we can secure accordingly in that way. And we can also start discussing with you um, what options you would like to see and what um, apartments may be in the area. Um, you know, housing is a big step here in the United States. So right after that flight is booked, it's a great time to start um, thinking about what you're gonna be doing um, as you get settled here in the United States. Um, and with all of that being said, it's time to start planning for your arrival in general. You're still in um, your current country. You're getting ready to come over. You know, it's time to start uh, getting rid of items you're not going to be bringing with you, preparing documents, um, not only for yourself, but also for your dependents. Uh, keep those in a safe place. Make sure they're easily found. Um, and and you're going to definitely need those for your flight on the way here. Um, start budgeting your funds for arrival and having an idea of what those funds are going to be looking like. Uh, think about transportation. You know, are you going to rent a car, uh, purchase one before you arrive, or use a transportation service? Your relocation coordinator has all kinds of resources to assist you with this, and they'd be happy to go over those options um, to find something that best suits you um, and your family. And make sure just to review all the details of your accommodations for your arrival. I think it's always best just to have that expectation um, so you know what to expect once you arrive um, at your initial airport and you're making your way to your initial accommodations. Awesome. Thank you so much, Molly. Um, again, wonderful information. Um, we have some um, questions that are actually coming in a little bit and just kind of wanted to ask you. So when it comes to matching your dependence flights, um, what does that look like? What, what are some tools that we use um, to be able to um, help with that situation? That is a great 
question, one that we get often. Now, we do have resources that um, can walk you step by step on how to find a matching flight. Um, my biggest recommendation is to use um, Agencia's sister company. Uh, they are called Expedia, which is another website you can book your dependents through. Um, usually, they have the same exact flights on there that they do on Agencia, um, so we can match those easily. Your relocation coordinator is happy to jump in to help match. Um, there's also ways of um, getting your family into Agencia, so we can all book to, uh, together through Agencia. Um, we have lots of options for adding matching flights. And one that I see used commonly is just to go directly to the airline's website um, and book directly through there so that everything matches um, completely around the same flight, same airline, same layovers, um, all that good stuff. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Molly. That's um, really good information. Uh, with those booking with dependents, again, your relocation coordinator is going to be able to know your situation and they're going to offer you the best option. Um, each one of those options that we talked about with uh, or that Molly was just talking about with their dependents, um, there's different pros and cons. There's there's different eases, and it's all going to depend on how many dependents you have. If your dependents are young children, if they're teenagers, um, if it's just your spouse. Um, so, working with your relocation coordinator, they're going to be able to give you those best options. Um, Hey, now that you're preparing and um, you've started planning for your arrival, um, Molly, what are the next steps that we want to look at? Great question. So, you, you know, you're kind of getting settled in, kind of having an idea for your arrival. Um, but things to start looking in before you come to the United States just to best prepare you are things like looking at um, the requirements in your state uh, for a driver's license. I um, you know, it's imperative here in the United States to have a driver's license in a car in almost every location that you're going to because public transportation um, isn't widely available. Um, so having an idea of what those requirements are going to be before your arrival um, can set you up for success for once you do arrive. So you have a full understanding of what you need to do to take care of um, in order to get a driver's license. Um, start looking into permanent housing options. This is also something your relocation coordinator is happy to help with. We have a number of resources to assist you with this process. Um, oftentimes, complexes will have online tours you can take. Um, it's a great time to start talking with the apartments about what they're offering and what um, steps need to be taken to, to secure this. Um, we have an entire USA Arrival Guide dedicated to you guys um, to ensure that we cover anything that you may think of when moving to a new country. So this is from um, housing and transportation to schools for your children, um, even down to some information about culture shock and things that you can prepare for ahead of time um, to make sure that you're taking care of your mental health as well as you're doing a very big change, a whole new place. We want to make sure you're acclimating as good as possible. And then one of my favorite things to do is I love to-do lists. Um, so having a to-do list um, that you can complete upon arrival just to keep you organized, um, things like getting a U.S. phone number, securing a bank account, um, looking at places that you're going to get furniture for your new home once it's secured, um, and setting up those permanent housing tours um, so you can do that upon your arrival and get um, settled in somewhere as soon as possible. Awesome. 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 Thank you, Molly. Um, just kind of looking at um, partnerships um, in regards to our next steps, um, do, you, do the candidates have to go with our partnerships um, that are offered? Great question. You do not have to go with our partnerships. You know, there's many options for you as you come and finding the best option for you is going to be the best thing for you. Um, but we have partnerships to help aid you and we have a lot of information about them. And it, I definitely think it's worth looking at. Um, oftentimes this can save money and hassle. Um, having connections with people that kind of already understand your situation. Um, so it's nothing that you have to do, but it's available to you should you need it or want more information about it. Love that. Thank you so much. And and our partnerships are growing every day. <laughs> we are working on um, building more and more of those to aid um, aid you in your relocation. Um, those partnerships can be found in your USA Arrival Guide, and then they can also be found by talking to your relocation coordinator, who can specify your needs to match you with the best partners um, to be able to help you there. Um, now we've gone over a lot of the steps, the process, uh, the, the booking process, the transition process up until the arrival, um, and talking about all the different little things that we can do to prepare. But sometimes we don't even know what to prepare for. Um, so 
kind of want to ask Andrea, what are some questions that our candidates can bring to you as a relocation coordinator? What, what are some things that you can help them with? Oh, you are on mute. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, you can ask your relocation coordinator about housing, how to find a house for you in, a, in your new neighborhood, in your new city. Ask about how to get a driver's license, how to rent a car. If you need to rent a car for a short period before buying your car or finding some public transportation. Um, ask about public transportation, some search about uh, this transportation in your new area. If you're traveling with kids, uh, ask your relocation coordinator about schools, child care, about the community, activities in your community, uh, church, uh, playgrounds, anything about that you can ask to your relocation coordinator. How to get a bank account, how to buy a car, uh, how to get a phone number in the United States. We have an amazing partner, uh, Mint Mobile. They have an amazing price. I, I, I have Mint Mobile now. Um, so ask your relocation coordinator how to get it. Uh, how to secure a short-term uh, health insurance. How to secure a travel insurance. And the reimbursement um, process and what is offered by your employer for reimbursement. Those are amazing questions, um, but be always in touch with your relocation coordinator. Awesome. Thank you so much, Andrea. Um, again, these are just a list of some of the questions that you can ask. Anything that has to do with your transition, your relocation coordinator is there to help you. Um, during your transition, you're, you are still involved with your case manager. I mean, your case manager can help answer those questions in regards to your immigration, things with your visa, um, and any of the documents that are associated with your employment, such as your offer letter, your reconfirmation letter, um, all of those um, topics will be handled with your case manager and your relocation coordinator is really there to help you with that transition itself, your actual relocation. Um, you'll also have your licensure specialist um, who will be assigned to you who can work with you on each and every uh, or let me rephrase. Your licensure specialist can help you with obtaining your appropriate license in the state that you're assigned um, and per um, your degree and um, offer um, employment. So very excited about that. Um, very excited to have a whole team of people there to help you um, in those final stages. So don't hesitate to reach out. And if you reach out to your case manager, you reach out to the relocation coordinator, and maybe they're not the specialist in that area, they will direct you to the right person who is. So you can reach out to any of us on your team, and we'll make sure that you get all the appropriate information. All right. Okay, so that's a little bit about the prep work for um, arriving in the U.S. Um, Molly, my question for you is what do you do now that you've arrived? Great question, Ashley. This is by far the most exciting part of the process. You've arrived here in the United States. You're working on settling in. Um, and kind of like I discussed earlier, having that to-do list of things to accomplish. Um, these are just some of the very initial things that you're going to want to be looking into, reaching out about because um, these are essential um, to your acclimation here in the United States. So um, setting up a bank account, um, getting a U.S. phone number. Um, as Andrea said earlier, we have a great partnership with Mint Mobile. We have another um, banking partnership that can help um, if you need. Happy to give resources and information in regards to that. Um, start looking at apartments or permanent housing. Um, a lot of times um, houses and apartments will allow you to set up tours so you can see um, the area before making a final decision. Um, explore your local area, grocery stores, churches, communities, fun activities, um, and maybe my favorite thing, some new restaurants to try. I love trying new foods in a new city, um, so I highly recommend looking for some fun things to look forward to. Um, talk with your employer about meet and greets or tours. You know, Have an idea of where you're going to be working and who you're going to be working with ahead of time. Um, and ask your relocation coordinator at any time in your relocation process uh, to set up a call and go over your acclimation. You know, you have a lot of things happening at this time. You just arrived to a brand new country. And sometimes having someone to speak to face to face um, eases a lot of the nerves. You can get a lot of the questions out of the way, um, give a lot of tips and tricks. 
Um, so don't ever hesitate to ask your relocation coordinator to set up a call. We'll be more than happy to go over your acclimation with you and see how we can better assist. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Molly. Those are wonderful tips. Um, when it comes to um, your arrival, um, your relocation coordinator won't be there um, with their feet on the ground um, in the area. Um, and so just kind of Molly, who, who's someone else um, that they can also reach out to with a lot of these questions? I think, you know, reaching out to your employer and having good communication with your employer um, who have their feet on the ground is going to be a great way to get local information. And um, even if it's just local tips and tricks about areas to um, go and explore or maybe areas to stay away from, you know, your employer is going to be there to assist you as well. I mean, they'll be happy to provide information regarding um, your new area and your location. I'm sure they'll be excited about it. <laughs> they are so excited for you to come just as we are. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Molly and Andrea, for helping answer some of those basic questions um, when it comes to the flight booking process. Um, before we head into the question and answer session, I just wanted to open it up to um, both of you and ask, is, is there anything that you would really like um, our, our candidates to know um, in regards to the flight process um, or working with you? I think the biggest thing, and you know, we've reiterated in here before, but talk to your relocation coordinator. You know, don't hesitate to reach out to us because you feel um, like you've asked a lot of questions already, or you feel like this is something you're supposed to know, or something that we might have gone over already. If you need clarification or if you need help, we are here to assist you. We're not going to leave you hanging. We're going to make sure that you get all the details that you need. We'll make sure that we're going to be clarifying things. Um, and issues that we need to handle, we will make sure are handled for you. And if, again, like Ashley had said earlier, if we're not the right person to handle it, we will definitely point you in the right direction, connect you um, with whoever you need to connect with in order to get those answers, um, uh, those questions answered. <laughs> Um, I recommend you to follow the steps of the process. Uh, these steps are there for a reason. Uh, and also read the entire emails. All the information on our emails are really important. So this is my biggest recommendation. Both of you, thank you so much. Thank you for all your insights um, and all the information that you've shared with us today. Um, we are uh, always so excited for every candidate that has received their visa and is looking to come. And uh, we've created this process so that it can give you the most support possible. Um, so please, please follow those instructions like Andrea said and, and continue to reach out to the relocation coordinator like Molly um, advised. So again, thank you, um, Molly and Andrea. We are not done. Um, we are now going to move into our question and answer segment of our webinar today. Um, I am going to go ahead and jump off camera. Um, I'm going to be looking through your questions. Um, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to answer all of them today, so I'm going to pick some of them. Um, but please, 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 if you have additional questions, take those to our team, and we'd love to talk to you about them. So I'm going to hit and jump off. Um, okay, so looking through these wonderful questions, wow, there's so many good ones. Um, the first one I want to pose to Andrea and um, Molly is someone asked, when do I get a relocation coordinator? That is a fantastic question. Um, so as soon as you have your embassy interview and you know if your visa is approved or not, at this point, you are just waiting to receive your visa in hand with that expiration date on it. As soon as you receive your visa in hand, your case manager is informing our team that you are ready for travel. Um, and then you'll be assigned a relocation coordinator accordingly who will reach out with that introduction email just to establish our relationship. Um, and that process, those steps that we reviewed today um, will continue from there. So as soon as you have that visa in hand, um, your case manager will connect you with our team um, and we'll make contact usually within, um, I'd say, three to five business days, just depending on um, when you've got that visa in hand. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. That was great. Um, all right. The next question that I have um, for Andrea. Andrea, do, um, do they have the opportunity to choose their own flight? 
Yes, yes. Um, when we, we, when we send a link, when I send a link to your email to access Agencia, you're going to create your profile, then you're going to search for the flight of your preference and send it for approval. This flight needs to be inside the policy with um, the layovers, um, there's a price, layovers, and it will be approved or not by your relocation coordinator. If it's not approved, you can go back to Agencia and send an, a new flight for approval, but you will be always on the power for choosing your flight and sending for approval. Awesome. Thank you. That was great. Um, all right. This one I have directed at Molly. Um, it says, in the worst case scenarios, if my flight gets delayed um, or there's a cancellation with my flights, what's the next step to rebook? That is a great question and, and a very real question, right? Because these do happen during travel. Unfortunately, things aren't always going to go perfect. Um, but First of all, don't panic. These happen. We deal with it constantly. We are trained to be able to help you with this. Um, the best thing to do is if you're at the airport and your flight gets canceled or delayed, first update your relocation coordinator and your employer with any changes that are being made and go directly to talk with the airline at the front desk. Um, you can go talk with them. They'll work on getting your flight rearranged. They're working with other people to get their rearranged as well. So usually they have the next um, best option available for you. They'll get you directly booked on that um, to continue your transition here. Um, now, if you're having cancellations or changes before the date of your flight, let's say a month before your flight, reach out to your relocation coordinator. Um, we can contact um, our contacts at Agencia directly to make sure we get you rebooked on the next best available flight um, right around those dates. Thank you. That's a great answer. Um, all right, next question that I have is for Andrea. And this question asks, uh, will I have someone to pick me up from the airport? It depends by your employer. Some employers will send a driver to pick you up to the in the airport. Another uh, employers will reimburse you for your transportation so you can download. We recommend you to download Uber before. Put your credit card information because we don't accept Uber. Uh, Uber doesn't accept uh, cash in the United States. Um, some other employers, they don't send a driver and they don't reimburse for the transportation. It will depend by your employer. Thank you. Um, that is a great, um, great answer there, um, Andrea. Um, I, one of the questions that asked, I'll answer real quick. It says, uh, will you share this call's recorded version? Absolutely. Um, this webinar is being recorded. Um, you will receive it within 24 hours after the conclusion of this uh, meeting. Um, so yes, look forward to that. Um, and please share it with um, any of your friends that are also arriving. Any of our candidates are welcome um, to listen to this webinar. Um, all right, I think we have time for maybe two more questions. Um, and so I'll direct this one at Molly. Um, and it says, are we allowed to fly within two weeks of our visa expiring? That is a fantastic question. There are always unique circumstances for every candidate, and we are willing to listen to your circumstances and give you the best advice available. My biggest advice I can give here is to never travel that close to your visa expiration date. And the reason is, it's kind of like going back to that question that we got earlier, flight cancellations, delays, illness, you know, sickness, you know, we have you know, COVID is still very real. And if you catch COVID, you know, two weeks before your flight and you're sick and you're still positive and you can't fly, um, these are going to push you past your visa expiration date. And if your visa expires before you've arrived here in the United States, you're going to have a long process of getting that again. Um, and that is not something that we want to happen to um, our, our candidates. We wanna make sure that you're coming within that appropriate timeline. Not only is your employer expecting you within that appropriate timeline, um, but we also wanna make sure that you're getting here um, so that you don't have to deal with anything um, with getting a visa again, um, going back through the embassy interviews, things like that. So um, I'm gonna say that, you know, just flying two weeks before your visa expiration date is is not a great idea i don't recommend it um everyone's situation is unique so reach out to your relocation coordinator and we'll give the best advice and the best options available to you um to make sure you have a smooth transition here thank you thank you uh, appreciate that 
Um, again, there's so many great questions. So I'm actually going to give you guys two more. Um, I know I said that a second ago, but um, Andrea, I'd like to ask you. Um, there, oh, so many. I want to ask them all. Um, what is the process for booking a flight or creating an itinerary that's outside of the typical offer or what is being offered? Um, how is booking the flight outside what uh, is being offered? Yes. So sorry for clarification. Um, how do they go about special approval requests? Uh, you must talk with your relocation coordinator. It will depend on your request and uh, your relocation coordinator will let you know if there's some special request, uh, like if you decide to visit your family in, in the Philippines and you're from uh, Dubai, there's a special travel request for that and you must talk with your relocation coordinator. Everything, communicate with them uh, and with us and we will have a, if we have a solution, we're gonna let you know. I love that, that was awesome. Thank you, thank you. Um, again, just for everyone's understanding, clarification, with all of the offers at Worldwide Health Staff Solutions, you are offered one international flight from your point of entry, or sorry, one international flight from your country of origin or where you're currently living into your facility location as booked by Worldwide Health Staff Solution. So if your case um, is requesting anything outside of those, there are special approval processes that'll go, just like Andrea said, um, and it'll follow that regard. So thank you, Andrea, that was wonderful. Uh, sorry for the um, kind of mix up with the question there, so great. <laughs> Um, last question we have to be able to answer today. Um, Molly, this, this um, individual is asking about how does it work when we have pets? Uh, what's the pest policy and, and what do we advise with pets? That's a great question. Now, I have pets myself and I love them. And um, if I was moving to a new country, I'd absolutely want to bring them with me. Um, but the best thing to do when you're coming with a pet or you have a pet that you will need to eventually bring is to have them fly and come to the United States after your arrival and you've settled here in the United States. And the reason is, is that airlines are very particular um, about pets coming into the United States or any location. Um, really, they all have very specific travel policies regarding pets, specific documents that your pets need to have. Um, I have seen delays and um, missed flights happen because of having pets, um, which can be very frustrating and um, really uh, jumbling um, when you're in the middle of a big transition um, to have to miss a flight or uh, miss things because you're coming with the pet. And flights aside, can also be hard to secure permanent housing while you have a pet with you as well. I mean, I always think it's best to find a place that you can secure at first that allows the pet that you have. Um, this gives you time to be able to, you know, even temporary accommodations can be very hard um, with allowing pets. So just having somewhere where you can settle, get acclimated first, and then bring your pet over after once you've fully settled um, and acclimated. That way they also can settle and acclimate well. They're not moving from location to location and you're not struggling to find somewhere to stay or struggling to find a flight to get to get on or missing any flight connections. Um, it's always going to be best that your pet comes after with you. Now we do have um, guides for traveling with pets and recommendations regarding traveling with pets and we'll be happy to help. Um, but if at the end of the day, if you do decide that coming with your pet is the best option for you, you know, this will be your responsibility to do research on. It will be your responsibility to make sure that you have all the documents that you need for this pet. Um, and if changes and cancellations or finding temporary housing or permanent housing is hard to do because of your pet, you know, this will be on you to figure out. You know, we're here to guide and to help. Um, but our biggest recommendation is to have your pet come afterwards. That way we make sure that you get here and you acclimate um, as well as possible. I'll have them join you once you have uh, fully settled in. Awesome. Well, again, Andrea, Molly, thank you so much for your expertise. Um, we, uh, we value your um, advice. Um, especially in these booking processes, is have you brought over many families and you, uh, you know what their needs are? Um, if there's one thing that I could emphasize um, is that when it comes to relocation, it's, it's going to be very different um, depending on your employer. 
Um, and so it's extremely important to continue to work with our team to make sure that you know exactly what steps and what um, policies, procedures you need to follow for your employer um, coming over. Um, they are sponsoring your immigration and they, with your offer letter, they're going to be giving you those benefits um, that they have. I would say all of our employers offer incredible benefits. Um, they're just different. And so make sure that you are looking at what's offered to you and asking those questions. Um, but those, those will also be offered to you. We'll also bring to your attention what is offered to you um, in regards to housing. Um, and when you have very specific case by case scenarios, again, be working with your um, relocation coordinator. They will get the approvals that are needed um, or guide you in the right direction of what we can do for you. So um, again, Andrea, Molly, thank you so much. Um, we would like to just kind of end by uh, introducing again our uh, Refer a Nurse program. This is an incredible program that we have um, started here at Worldwide where you can earn up to $250 per qualified referral. Um, if you click on this link below or you go to uh, this website, um, you'll be able to see what the qualified, uh, the qualifications for that um, referral is, but you can earn up to 250 per referral. So it's not just once, um, it's every time. So it's an incredible program um, and we hope that you use it. Um, and make a little extra cash to help you in your relocation process. Um, but please know we care about you. Um, we are here to help. Um, we, uh, our goal as a relocation department is to make sure that your transition to the U.S. Um, is done with ease and with as much um, support as possible. We want to be there for you. Um, if you want to jump on a call with us, we'd love to get on a call with you. If you'd like to stay with email, we're there too. So um, just remember, we're here for you. I'm very excited about your arrival. Um, again, I just want to give Molly and Andre, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Reach out to our team with questions. We are happy to answer those for you. Um, and enjoy the rest of your day or evening, depending on where you're tuning in from. Awesome. Thank All you. Right. I was really happy to be here today. We are so thankful that you were here today, too. Um, thank you for all who are listening. Um, this recording will be sent out to you in the next 24 hours. Have a great rest of your day.